This week on The Wire, 111 markets treble in 20 years, buyers back in the game, and RBA sparks refinancing push. G'day guys, welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening from around Australia in real estate, finance, property, and investment. My name's Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing of uh, Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether there be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, early retirement, and we've done it all using only what they can have available to them currently right now, and we've produced very high customer satisfaction ratings. Guys, so I just wanna kick it off, um, and just also welcome the first time viewer, Thanks a lot for coming in. Make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you follow so that you can see these videos in the future. And of course, if you're a long time follower, welcome back. We love to see you guys. We love to see all the interaction, the questions, the comments, the like, love, angries, and of course, all the sharing that you guys do with these videos with your friends and family. So thanks a lot for that. But let's kick it off. Let's get stuck into the top stories happening this week. So 111 markets treble in 20 years. So house prices in 111 Australian locations have trebled over the past two decades, and that's according to research from Firm Propertyology. So and the analysis was conducted over the 20 years to the end of 2018 on 180 Australian towns and cities. So there's 180 towns and cities Australia-wide, so they conducted this research on all of those, okay? All, uh, and this is with populations of over 10,000 people, just to clarify. The research shows that regional markets have been competitive with capital city markets and particularly on long-term capital growth. Now, whether someone purchased in any of our eight capital cities 20 years ago or in most of Australia's non-capital locations, today it's worth at least three times what they paid for it. And that comes from Propertyology's Simon Presley. Now, Presley says that median, the median house price in Sydney 20 years ago was the most expensive in the country at $220,000. However, anyone that bought in a major regional location back then would have paid only a fraction of that price while achieving a similar growth rate. Now, locations with a more affordable median house price have more upside potential for capital growth. Now, the real skill is being able to identify locations with positive leading economic indicators. Any spot on uh, economic activity in property markets is one of the major factors in terms that drive growth. The other thing is, personally, uh, unless you're an experienced and professional property investor with a large portfolio, Personally, I think it's better to stay away from regional locations. They have less um, industries which run their economies. So if there's a downturn in a particular industry, it can be impacted by that. So this, while you'll see over the long term, same growth, but you might see some greater fluctuations. Personally, I prefer the capital city locations. But the one thing you really wanna get from this article is it's the affordable locations which actually produce the best growth, which flies in the face of what most people think. Most people think blue chip suburbs, suburbs that are the kind of nicer, more expensive suburbs are the suburbs that grow the most. It's absolutely not the case. In fact, there's been a lot of um, uh, research which has shown that Suburbs that have the highest uh, crime rate are actually also suburbs that get the greatest growth rates. So don't be worried too much about these blue chip locations. And of course, you know, this is one of the things that we educate our clients in, right? But moving on to the next top story. So buyers are back in the game. So this is major developers of housing estates and apartments have welcomed the recovery in buyer inquiries since the federal election. So we've, we've seen an increase in inquiries since the federal election as well. House prices and starts fell in the lead up to the May election, in being, but inquiries have since jumped for both house and land packages and inner city apartments. Now, property group stock Auckland uh, says the market has opened up again with signs emerging that pricing has bottomed and will recover soon. Now keep in mind that Stockland are going to be referring primarily to those Sydney and Melbourne markets. We're already seeing starting to see prices move in both Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, Chief Executive uh, Community uh, Chief Executive of Communities Andrew uh, Whitson says inquiry levels have jumped thirty percent in Sydney and Melbourne's in the week after the election. These are the markets that are being impacted the most at the moment uh, in terms of their downturns. So that's a that's a big pickup and a big spike. Uh, Crown Group says the market has been recovering and with further loosening of credit, expected to drive sales at its projects in Sydney, uh, Brisbane and Melbourne. Now also Comsec Chief Economist Craig James says the housing market continues to rebalance with first home buyers uh, taking a greater share. First home buyers were active before the election and they have every reason to be out in full force post election. He says tipping also that the investor market He's tipping also that the investor market, keep in mind he's talking about those Sydney and Melbourne markets, uh, could show some life pretty soon. I mean, this is certainly the case, like I said before, in Perth. I mean, we've now got 40% uh, of suburbs in Perth worth more than they were 12 months ago. But into our final story for the today, guys, the RBA sparks refinancing push. So interest in rock bottom mortgages has risen since the Reserve Bank uh, cash rate cut. And this is according to the comparison site finder. Following the drop to a new level of 1.25%, that's the cash rate, borrowers have acted swiftly to take advantage of low rate loans. Now traffic 
to uh, sites like Finder uh, jumped 654% in the 48 hours after the RBA announced the cash rate uh, decrease on the 4th of June. Interest in variable rates uh, on Finder grew by 564% and there's been a 369% spike in those looking to refinance. Okay, Graham Cook, Insights Manager at Finder, says the uptick shows Aussies are becoming increasingly savvy with their finances. It's great to see Australians being proactive and looking for better value. This historically low rate, uh, this historically low rate will open lots of eyes to just how good the current offers are, and that's the case for both variable, variable and fixed rates. While the big four were quick to announce a rate discount following last uh, week's RBA decision, only two, CBA and NAB, uh, will pass on the cut rate, uh, the, the full cut. Many lenders have already reduced their rates in anticipation of the rent drop, uh, in the rent drop, uh, the rate drop. In May, excuse me. In May, 49 lenders reduced rates on 778 product, uh, 78, 778 different home loan products. All right, finally got through that one. A little bit difficult at the end there, guys. But that covers off all the top stories happening for the week in real estate this week. Once again, guys, don't forget follow, subscribe if you're new. If you've been around a while, share, comment, like, love. Okay, angry. Also, don't forget we've got our Just Ask Tim video series where I can answer your questions directly. Uh, do that once a week. You know, make sure you send through your questions. You can post uh, in the comment box below or contact us through our website and we'll be more than happy to do that. Guys, please, thanks a lot for tuning in. We love to see you guys along. Please have a great weekend and I'll look forward to speaking to you soon. See ya.